What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the War Report of Cloudwing Valley. I'm your host, Foglana, and this is Week 5, Saturday, April 17th, 2021. This week was filled with excitement as the Borderlands opened, and then the Center Thieves became eligible. A lot of us hit level 7. We were able to take on some of those Center Thieves. A lot of things happening. We even saw some YT creeping up north. Scary. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, take a look at what happened. We're going to start with Ungavari because nothing really happens there. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, let me go over one little announcement, guys. I know you've been waiting for it. Monday. Monday, Monday, Monday. The Shield Maidens arrive. First female troop in the game. Can't wait. know you guys are looking forward to it. We're going to see how well they hold up. Should be really cool to see how much meta there is on this thing. So uh, if you haven't been saving up all your EXP for the last month, sorry to be you. You're going to have to grind that thing out. In any case, I know we are all looking forward to it. So uh, be sure to log in first thing Monday morning. Go get that shield maiden. It's going to be a lot of fun. One other little announcement, if you missed it on Tuesday, I have worked with a few other people on our server to put together a list of every thief quest that is above tier 4. We got a lot of tier 3s on there as well. So every tier 4 plus thief quest in the game that we can find is on this list. It is available on the Conqueror's Blade Hub website. So gseh.info slash cbthiefquest will jump you right there. I update this every Monday morning. So that way it's all there for you. Everything is there. It's sortable. You can search for by resource, by region, by stars, whatever you want. So let's go ahead and jump over to Ungavaria. This is where we sat on Tuesday. Uh-oh. What happened? YT's got everything but five thieves. We can probably see how this is going to go this season. I think uh, they're pretty well in the deck for the Tillaveros. Battle-wise, we saw a total of eight thieves change hand tonight. There you go. Now, some of these thieves got taken and then taken back by the other house. So, uh, you know, Radiance got a few from Digital Order. But for the most part, Spartan Legion seemed to check out of the region. Not sure where they ended up, but they are definitely not home here anymore. Taking a look at the Houses of Ungavaria, we have Radiance, Digital Order, and Atlas. Pretty much YT. So how's that prosperity rating going? So, YT, we need to have a talk. You guys are the biggest dog in the yard. You have a million billion people. And you can't even run one single zone? Come on, guys. It's deteriorating on us. 250 now. This should be way over 1,000. Seriously, come on. Come on, man. 90% is owned by free houses or yellow turbans. Um, started with 21,900 influence, currently sitting at 21,650 influence. Prosperity rating of negative 250. That is stable, but not great. You should get that up. The average fort level is 4. The average town level is 3. The average village level is 1. Hopefully we do not see this continue to drop, but chances are with that much land taken by one alliance, we're going to see it drop. Jumping all over to the war for Tillavaros, there is only one yellow turbans. We all knew that. For those that call Ungavaria home, we have a total of five thief quests to look out for. Elite Rebel Officer Belongings, Granite, and Elite Rebel Melee Kits are our Tier 5 Thief Quests. Limestone and Uncommon Rebel Melee Kits are our 4 stars. Jumping on over to Anadolu, we've got such a colorful map. Look at that. We got a little red, a little yellow, a little blue. 
Lots of different colors there. Lots of different houses there. Let's see how it looks after Tuesday. There we go. Things changed. Spartan Legion came down, looks like. They'd be taking over some stuff down there. Now, I did not see Midway Kings or Black Hand and Nod on the map tonight. That is strange. Not sure where they went, what happened there, but uh, I did notice that one of their Alliance members jumped and is now allied up again. So we shall see what happens of that. I'm not sure where they ended up. Over on the battle screen, here we go. There are our big kingdom changes. Total of 18 fiefs changed hands tonight. Resurgency, welcome to the party. I noticed you guys popped up on the map. Really happy to see some new blood. Taking a look at the houses of Anadolu, we have Revival, number one, with 4,050 points. Digital Order, number two, with 3,900 influence. Radiance, number three, 3,850 influence. Spartan Legion, number four, with 2,100 influence. And Resurgency, with 150 influence. Good to know. Now, this is one of the most war-torn regions of the game so far. Uh, I think Borderlands will probably catch up here, but um, when it comes to downgrading thieves from flipping various ways, this one pretty much, you know, um, kind of took the biggest beating, I think, early on the season. So they're sitting at 44% of their prosperity rating. There's 44 ha uh, of the thieves are owned by free houses, 8 owned by legions. It started with 22,200 influence, currently sitting at 19,750 influence, prosperity rating of negative 2,450, average fort level is 3, average town level is 3, and average village level is 1. Now jumping over to the race for Regionopolis, we now have three contenders on the map. We have Yellow Turbans, Phoenix Legion, and Prophecy of Kings. This is going to be a three-way fight, possibly. Well, four-way if you include the cohorts. And I, I, I do think the cohorts are going to give them a good run. Um, we will see how well it goes. I, I, I think the cohorts could hold them off at least a wave, maybe two. We will see. So Prophecy of Kings does need to get another 900 influence before they're eligible to knock on the door, but it could happen. For being a war-torn region, there are fewer thief quests available here, but one, one is really, really, really good. Bolin. That is a food thief quest. This is the easiest kind of thief quest you could possibly do. Every no gives you food. Doesn't matter what color it is, just gives you more. Um, if the person that owns Volin is smart, they will keep that tax low enough where people pay it. If they raise it too high, people just use requisition tokens and you get jack squat. If you got a food note, this is your money maker this week because five star thief quest, only one in the zone. People are going to be hounded for that food. You just keep it flowing. Five, the four star thief quest, we have Limonite, Mag, Magnetite, Pine Timber, Junior Rebel Officer Belongings. You all probably have a hundred of those. And then uh, Uncommon Rebel Melee Kit, you probably have a bazillion of those. So feel free to turn those in as well. Now you got until tomorrow night to do it. Otherwise you're all out. It's going to be all new quests come Monday. Hopping on over to Astaria. There's where we sat last week. Nice sprinkling of all things. And here's where we sit this week. 
not a whole lot changed. There was a lot of fighting going on, some really good fights. You know, Austal is still standing. Um, that is impressive in itself. The, the northern cohorts are serious business. I kid you not. It, I, I've been here since season one. I've seen this since the cohorts were, were basically envisioned that very first season. I've seen them grow to what they are today, and I can tell you that the northern cohorts are unreal. I would put them on the same bar as YT. If YT was to challenge them, I think they would have a hard time. It's definitely not an easy pushover. In fact, YT, let's see what you've got. Go get Austal. Let's see it. I challenge you. Cohorts versus YT. Let's see if they can get Austal. Yeah, Austal should be the capital of Osteria this season. Everybody has thrown their body at it, and it has not fallen. Looking at the fights around Osteria. There you go. Total of 10 thieves. Change hands. Jumping on over to the Houses of Astaria, we have the Knights Templar sitting there with 3,200 influence, the Templars with 2,000 influence, Ornair with 1,850 influence, Goshkia with 1,750 influence, Warborn with 1,100 influence, Radiance with 1,050 influence, Speak with 750 influence, Lonely Hearts Club with 400 influence, here with 350 influence, Vidar with 350 influence, and Atlas with 150 influence. Now, Austeria knows how to party. We thief quests like nobody's business. I'm telling you, 58% we actually tipped over to the healthy. That's basically about um, almost 10% higher than where we started. So we have a 74% ownership of by free houses to a 26% by legions. Started at 16,500 influence, currently sitting at 19,250 influence. Prosperity rating is healthy with 2,750 influence. Average fort level is 4, average town level is 5, average village level is 2. Taking a look over at the War for Algolia, we have two in the running. The Woodcutters Union and Valor. Who's going to win that fight? You know, either one gets knock on that door. They still got to pass the cohorts, and uh, my money's on the cohorts. I think the cohorts are going to keep Algolia this season. Now, with the prosperous little country, we have what is seen here as a whole lot of thief quests available to you. Yes, there are six tier 5 thief quests available in Australia. A whole lot of tier 4 Huzzah! thief quests. Thank you for the follow. So there you go. If you need to turn in any thief quests, we have lots of 5 star thief quests available. Feel free to turn them in. The, that 2 stack of hematite is super good. That's really easy to come by. When you mine hematite, it comes out really plentiful and you can definitely get a lot of that stuff quickly now there was one i think it's in the borderlands it has the the green horses i think actually popped as a thief quest which i've never actually seen so that's kind of cool so we're gonna cruise on over to the borderlands check this out thanks for the follow guys oh that looks pretty There you go. <laughs> That's what happens when you click too many buttons at the same time. Alright, so there's our previous Northern Borderlands owners. Now this is going to get interesting. Now, preface this, there was a whole lot of fighting up north. A whole lot. And that's what we're sitting at right now. So you see a couple of those fish change color, a couple of yellows popping up in there. Kind of interesting. I hear there was a lot of good fights up there. Um, 
good work on that. I definitely, it was good to see a lot of the House of Lords and just us getting some fights and actually having some fun up there. It would have been really bad if it was kind of, you know, absolutely dry. Nobody up there, nobody doing anything. Thank you, Master X Axel, for the subscribe. Looking at the battles in the Northern Borderlands, there you go. Now let's hop on down to the South Borderlands. Here's what we were looking at on Tuesday. And here's what we're looking at now. Welcome, King. Yep, we got some houses that don't even have alliances taking up some thieves down there. It's pretty nice. Got Just Us poking up down there. We got uh, the Partisans grabbing a thief. Varangian Guard got two thieves. It's good to see some new blood down there. Taking a look at the battles, there's quite considerably more fiefs changing hands down there. A total of 15 fiefs changed hands. So taking a look at the houses of the borderlands, there are quite a few. This is kind of what Osteria looked like earlier this season. Digital Order was 7,550 influence. Nightmare was 6,300 influence. House of Lords with 4,850 influence. Radiance with 4,050 influence. Shaolin with 4,050 influence. Spartan's Glory with 1,950 influence. Varangian Guard with 1,050 1, influence. Partisans with 900 influence. Hurt with 600 influence. Hightower with 300 influence, Open Mid with 150 influence, and Goblin with 150 influence. So how about that Borderlands Prosperity? Now with just us losing a little land and uh, YT starting to hyperextend up there, we're going to see a little bit of, of a downturn here. Um, the hard part about owning a lot of land is you can't possibly keep the Thief Quest going to all of those and maintain them. They will downgrade. And as they flip, they're going to downgrade faster. So this prosperity in the Borderlands is guaranteed to shrink into nothingness. It's, gonna, it's probably going to be the worst off zone because it's so big, so vast, and there are so many different kind of pockets that people like to play in. So as they push down those pockets, wipe out thieves, come back, it's going to drop. So this expect to see this prosperity rating somewhere around maybe 30 to 25% by the end of the season. It's going to happen. So 94% of the, the Borderlands is owned by the Free Houses. 6%, which is pretty much Conquer City and the Four Gates, is uh, currently owned by Legion. There is no Borderlands Legion, so that's kind of one of the big factors there. Starting Influence. 43,150. It is currently sitting at 41,900. It has a negative 1,250 influence, which is uh, pretty much stable at the current set, but it will probably climb a little bit lower. Average fort level is 4. Average town level is 6. Average village level is 1. So far, I don't think we've seen anything upgrade out there, at least not beyond what they've we have a couple level twos on the, the villages. We haven't seen a level seven uh, stronghold yet. So a region that has like 83 or 73 thieves, 73 thieves that are takeable, all of which all the towns in that region were tier six to start the week. So you had a total of five five-star thief quests available to you. And unfortunately they are all elite rebel kits and plongings. Yeah, that kind of sucks. But if you have done a lot of rebel camps, um, you might have those on hand. 
Anyone that has the uh, 12 rebel officer belongings, that's probably a lot of farming of the roaming rebels to get that. There are a lot of tier 4 thief quests, and Whalewind has Genet thief quests. That's like actually the first time I've ever seen Genet on the map. So, uh, yeah, if you got a crap ton of Genets, that's where you wanted to dump them. It's either that or the glue factory. Next up, let's take a look at the top 10 builders currently building on our server. We have Knights Templar sitting there with 800, a total of 8 fiefs. Goshkiet, number 2, with 4 fiefs and 550. Fornair with 5, with a 500 prosperity rating. The Templars with 350, with 3 fiefs. Lonely Hearts Club with 2 fiefs and a 100 rating. Atlas with 13 fiefs and a 50 rating, here with 2 fiefs and a 50 rating, Vidar with 2 fiefs and a 50 rating, and Warborn with 3 fiefs and a 50 rating. That essentially is the number of influence from where it started to where it lives now uh, for their entire realm. So all the fiefs that they own, that's how much they have. So Nice Templar is climbing quite rapidly with those 8 fiefs. That's basically 2 upgrades per village would be that. Um, if they own just villages, the towns go up a little faster. Um, at least until they hit rank, I think rank 5 for villages, it starts going up by 100 instead of by 50 each time. Taking a look at the alliance standings, I fixed it from Tuesday, so it doesn't list the same people on both sides. Yellow Turban's on top. Just Us, second place. Valor, third. The Last Legion, 4th, Phoenix Legion, 5th, Woodcutters Union, 6th, Prophecy of Kings, 7th, Hibernia, 8th, No Evil, 9th, Fabled Few, 10th, and Resistance, 11th. Over on the top gains, we have Yellow Turbans with a gaining 9, Phoenix Legion gaining 7, Fabled Few gaining 2, Last Legion gaining 2, Woodcutters Union gaining 9, on the losses, Just Us uh, suffered the biggest losses with 10. Um, Resistance lost 5. The Lion's no! Den lost 2. Thank you for the follow, guys. No Evil lost 2, and Valor lost 1. Thank you. So many follows tonight. So blessed. Thank you, guys. Uh, Top gains of the week, Revival gained 7, Atlas gained 5, Hurt gained 4, Spartan Legion gained 3, Digital Order gained 2, Varangian Guard gained 2, Radiance gained 2, Regency gained 1, Lonely Hearts Club gained 1, and House of Lords gained 1. Biggest losses of the week, Partisans lost 5, Spartans Glories lost 5, Shoutland lost 3, Speak lost 3, Nightmare lost 2, Midway Kings lost 2, Black Hand and Nod lost one, and Warborn lost one. For the final rundown of the night, we're going to take a look at how the houses stack up. Digital Order is currently on top. 44 fiefs. That's a heck of a lot of fiefs. I don't even want to know what your mailboxes look like. Radiance with 38 fiefs. Nightmare with 14 fiefs, but 6,300 influence worth of fiefs. Um, they're they're focusing on small packages, right? So uh, House of Lords with 11 fiefs, Atlas with 13 fiefs, Revival with 16 fiefs, Sheldon with 5 fiefs, Knights Templar with 8 fiefs, Spartan Legions with 6 fiefs, the Templars with 3 fiefs, Spartan Glory with 7 fiefs, Fornair with 5 fiefs, Goshke with 4 fiefs, Warborn with 3 fiefs, Varangian Guard with 2, Partisans with 1, Speak with one. And then Hurt has four villages. Currently sitting at 18th. Lonely Hearts Club with two villages. Currently at 19. And here with two at 20. And that pretty much rounds it up, guys. We've made it all the way through. Now next Tuesday, we're going to see how those uh, shield maidens play out on the battlefield. Should be really glorious. bounce on back to there and yeah I hope to have a little analysis 
next Tuesday. Today I was a little limited time. I couldn't really do everything I wanted to do, but I wanted I want to do a comparison of how we were last season to how we are this season, and uh, check it out. So uh, thank you so much for joining. This is all for tonight. I want to thank you all for, for following the channel, for the subscribers that we had tonight. Master X Axel, thank you. Dorda, thank you for the mass subscribing of people.